House of the Dragon Episode Four, in my opinion, uh, is incredible. It it mm. it dropped my jaw. <laughs> it yeah. it made me excited. It was thrilling, man, yeah. especially towards the end there. But we'll get to the end. I want to talk a little bit um, with you about hitting some of the main points at the beginning because there's a lot of setup here, and then we had a huge payoff that we felt was coming. So mm. what, what are some of your first reactions? Not including the end payoff, the the big battle scene that we see with the dragons and everybody knows what we're talking about. But I, I felt like the episode was assemble my council. And then <laughs> that was kind of the episode where we all we got was a lot of council meetings to figure mm -hmm. out what's next. And right. um, it wasn't boring, I don't think. I mean, it was a little bit. He, even the king, he used the words. He's like, you're boring me. And then he walked away. <laughs> and well, so I guess that was kind of the point. But I, uh, it's interesting if, look, just people sitting around talking without like a lot of action going on, it can come across as boring. But they've done so much intrigue set up, as we mentioned in previous episode reviews, that I feel like the pieces of the chessboard have been moved. And so even if it's even if it's just a conversation between two characters, there's so much richness mm -hmm. in the meaning behind these. So I want to first talk about um, talk about before we get to the end. I want to talk about Alicent specifically, um, okay. as well as Damon, because they I think they had the most amount of screen time. If I'm correct, uh, Damon and Alicent had the most yeah. amount of screen time in this episode. So Damon, he's um, having a lot of visions. And, mm -hmm. uh, and it, it was interesting last, last week we saw him having a vision of young Rhaenyra trying mm -hmm. to mend the mistakes that he's made in this episode. Uh -huh. Um, we see that he has a vision of Rhaenyra again, um, yep. and he cuts her head off. And then he has a, he has a, a vision later of seeing himself as Aemon, you know what yeah. I mean? That was a and big I think, thing. I think... I think he sees a lot of Aemon in himself, maybe, or mm -hmm. a he sees his younger, the things that he did when he was younger in Aemon. So he kind of seeing him on the same path, I guess, maybe is what he's thinking. And it was yeah. interesting that he saw Aemon and then turned around and it was him. Right, right. It's there. There's a lot of interesting ways that we can decipher this. And again, we've said this over and over again, but we haven't read the books. We don't know exactly what happens with all the characters. Um, and so all we could do is to take it at face value. Uh, some of the interesting ideas that I came up with is when I see um, him not hearing Rhaenyra, right? Like he wasn't understanding her. Um, that's literally like a symbol of him not hearing her and ignoring what she has to say and doing what he thinks is best um cutting the head off is symbolizes in my mind he's going to feel responsible like he's going to be the death of Rhaenyra in some capacity um mm -hmm. and then also with Aemon we're seeing that it could be a mirroring so like Aemon is the natural um contrast is the natural uh you know how <laughs> in Jurassic Park the life finds a way you know what I mean yeah it's almost like the opposing side the greens rose to power or like nature or life found a way to create a natural antithesis I guess well, high, to the Damon. high towers is what you're saying right when the you high towers right yeah. and so in Amon and Damon it's not only that Damon's going to see himself as possibly the death of Rhaenyra, he's not listening to her, but also um, there's going to be a form of almost like Aemond is his fault. You know what I mean? Like the biggest threat in the opposing side is because of Damon, right? Mm -hmm. And obviously not everything about that is correct, but there's an aspect that that's how he sees it in some capacity. So go to uh allison it's kind of interesting uh she looks like she's pregnant at least she was and <laughs> she was <laughs> she was and well then, obviously it makes sense why um why she's choosing to rid herself of the pregnancy and that's because it's Kristen cole's like she can't yeah. have that and i think she's over adding complications to the mix and obviously it's super scandalous and in their cultural like uh, she keeps referring to i've i've sinned right well and she i think 
she also is is in this mindset of like I sinned so much because that's what Rhaenyra did in season mm -hmm. one, and she hated and, and she came to like despise Rhaenyra because of it because she knew that Rhaenyra yeah. was having kids with the other guy, and so right she didn't like, want to be the same. same thing now, and so it's it's kind of. Um, an oxymoron, I guess. I don't know if that's that's the right term, but I, I suppose, yeah. I mean, it's 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 a she's trying to hide a contradictory in her own morality, you know, in her yeah. own view of herself that she's uh, doing the same thing. That's an interesting point. Also, I thought it was in with Allison. I thought it was wild how um, the juxtaposition. So before last episode, she was convinced that Viserys wanted Aegon to be the ruler now she's having doubts and in some ways she's convincing herself and others around her that it doesn't matter what Viserys meant the truth dies with him and now we are where we are in the yeah. same way that she almost sees like well thousands of people dying this civil war inside the family it is inevitable because Rhaenyra is a woman on some level um and and she wasn't his living firstborn son. And I think yeah. that's, that's a big narrative through this. Also, I found it so interesting when she, when she talks to uh, Laris, where she almost shuts down the idea of her having doubts and saying, it doesn't matter what he intended. This is where mm -hmm. we are now. I, on, on the surface, obviously do nothing, right? Mm -hmm. Do what you're supposed to do what you're needed to do. And it's do nothing. Right. And mm -hmm. let the people who are wise sort out what's going on that kind of obviously sets him on a on a path in this episode to, mm -hmm. to what mess appears to be up. his well what appears to be his death right well no i'm predicting that his dragon's down he <laughs> is still alive i think i think he's gonna you come think? back yeah i think he's it's, there wasn't back. any urgency with cole and aim and it appeared no. as though the king is dead well right? also uh, uh wyatt pointed this out uh cole is kind of like shell shocked at this point or he's just kind of drowsy he he just kind of woke back up and mm -hmm. he's like what's going on type thing so i think that's that's why there's no urgency and also it's the end of the episode you gotta leave some suspense for next week i don't yeah, think he yeah. died i think um i mean the ed the lady definitely died she fell off yeah. the dragon but rainy i don't think he died rainy so yeah uh but Rhaenys is dead, and um, I'll say for the for the fans, I, I haven't despised her character as much as the online people, commentists have. Mm. A lot of people say she's the worst character in the show, <laughs> in a lot of people's opinions. I, I don't necessarily see that. I see that I see her role as more. She was a she's an older woman who has a lot of ideas, and it ne her whole life, all of her ideas never really never really were paid attention to. Mm -hmm. And all of her uh, ambitions were never paid attention to. And so everything that she wants to do doesn't really fit in the natural flow of the system. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it never works out. She ends up making a, honestly, at this point, a bad decision by not killing the Greens when she had the chance in the first season. Mm -hmm. But um, but this is this is the world that that they live in. So she's gone. I mean, th there's yeah. going to be some serious repercussions there. But um, and also like I'm pretty sure her dragon was the most battle weathered, battle experienced dragon that Rhaenyra had, <laughs> besides yeah. Damon. I'm pretty sure. I um, I don't know who how many seasons they're planning on doing for House of the Dragon, but I think we're going to see a lot of episodes three. like this, like very much like oh this episode this person dies and then it's like slowly people are going to be dying just being and, picked off yeah yeah until inevitably we all know Rhaenyra gets hey well yeah <laughs> I, I, I almost said that. I almost said don't don't spoil it but if you watched Game of Thrones Joffrey yes. spoils it yeah um, spoil it we know it, it's not so much about what's going to become of her because we it has been spoiled from the show but we do know that who like who's going to be the lineage like mm -hmm. is it is it Rhaenyra's side of the family is it um Alicent's side of the family like which which Targaryen blood gets passed down and ends up becoming like Daenerys you yeah. know what I mean um 
So that's going to be something that's interesting as loyal as just the path along the way. Okay, so it was Aemond that seemingly killed or seriously maimed his own brother, the king. You know what I mean? Yeah. And on purpose. And before that, in front of the council, showed himself to be a better leader, more wise and more strategist of a king. And we already know that in the first season – Amond was saying, why are you not fit to be king? I am. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And so it seems as though I don't it, it seems like it was an assassination attempt on Amon's part, if we're being honest. <laughs> it's what it bit, seems like. A little bit. Um, um and he is if 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 Aegon's very king. Much, very much reminiscent of younger Damon, where uh, Oh, it's actually the opposite because Damon didn't try to kill his Brother. Well, he didn't. He didn't try to kill his brother, but he's very much envious of the throne, and he wants to. He wants yes. to be the ruler, um, yes. and he feels like he deserves it more than his brother. And the, until later, when the king's about to die, he does show that he respects him by picking up the crown and everything. But right, right, he still thinks he should be the ruler. But it, it's interesting. I guess we'll see if he died or not. But uh, that'll be for next week. If you guys enjoyed this review, give it a like, subscribe to the channel, and we will see you next week for episode four, five Five. of (laughs) House of the Dragon. (laughs) 